everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Today I'm actually going to be making two soaps. The first is a rimmed soap. Now what I can tell from my research is that this technique came about from a challenge between two soaping friends where they challenged each other to make a thin rim of soap and fit it around the circular soap. Now those two soapers were Tatiana Serco of Soaps by Stetso and Helena from Soap Techniques. Now both are amazing soapers and of course I've left a link to their blog posts so you can have a look at more of their amazing work and find out a little bit more about them if you want to. Now the second soap really sort of came about as a byproduct of the rimmed soap I was doing. I decided that for the rim of my soap, I wanted to have a peacock swirl design. So I thought that was a great opportunity to go through the peacock swirl technique. Now I didn't need all of my peacock swirl soap for my rimmed soap. So therefore I've turned the remainder of that soap into standard soap bars so that I didn't have any waste. Come on, let's go and make some soap. So the colours I'm going to be using today are Lime from You Make It Up, then Purple Heart and Red Riot, both of those are from Mica Mama, and some Titanium Dioxide. So I've mixed up each of my colours into a little bit of olive oil, any lightweight oil will do, just made sure they're nicely dispersed. And then I'm going to make up a full loaf bar of one type of soap. Now this soap I'm going to make is going to be used for the rim of my rimmed soap. Now there are actually a couple of ways that you can make a rim. You can either pour a very thin layer of soap, cover that and put it in the oven to gel and then take it out and whilst it's still flexible bend it and make the rim. Or the way that I'm going to do where I make a thicker bar of soap and then I'm going to plane off bits of that soap and use that to make my rim. Now the advantage of the way that I'm doing it is I think you get a much more consistent rim of the same thickness going all the way around your soap and therefore can give a nicer design. However it can be a little bit more wasteful. You're making up a whole bar of soap and potentially just using a little bit of it. However, if you're careful with the way that you plan things out, there's no reason why you should waste the rest of that soap. And you'll see that I'm going to do today, I'm just going to use the extra of that rim with its lovely design in it to just turn that into full bars of soaps themselves. Now for the peacock swirl you do want to keep a nice fluid batter, not really really thin, you do want to have a trace but you do need to make sure that it's going to stay fluid throughout the whole pour. So here I'm just literally bringing my batter up to emulsion and then I'm going to stop and mix it into those colours. So I'm just going to check the weight of my batter now. I already know the weight of my jug, I have it engraved on all the sides of them. So I'm just going to take that off the weight and then divide that into four even parts for this pour for the peacock swirl. And then I'm just going to mix in each of those colours by hand. And remember, because we've dispersed them first of all, we shouldn't need a stick blender to mix them in. And that's important, isn't it? Because we don't want our trace to get too thick. That red was in a pot that was just far too small and causing a mess everywhere so I just transferred it into a funnel jug and then I'm just going to add in some titanium dioxide into that remaining batter and we're going to be ready to go. 
I never even blend my titanium dioxide into my soap base. I find because of the way that I disperse it up front, um, and if you haven't seen my video on how I do that, I'll put a link in the description below, it means I can just stir it in. So again, I don't have any acceleration of the batter. And then I'm going to weigh out the fragrance oil for each section of my batter. Now the fragrance oil I'm using is Black Plum and Rhubarb from Candle Shack in the UK. And I'll get that fragrance oil thoroughly mixed in and then transfer into some squeeze bottles. Now at this point my soap batter still really isn't at a trace so I'm just going to leave it alone and let it sit there and wait till it comes to the trace I need. And then when I'm happy that I'm at a thin trace I'm going to transfer everything into my squeeze bottles. My squeeze bottles are actually quite small and I like them like that. I prefer to perhaps have to fill them up a couple of times rather than have a great big squeeze bottle that's hard to squeeze. And then don't forget, if you gently squeeze the squeeze bottle as you put the cap on and put your finger over it, when you shake it and then release it, it won't squirt that little bit of batter all over you. It will suck it back into the bottle. And then I'm just going to take my soap mould and grab my squeeze bottles one at a time and just squirt some little rows of batter and just continue doing that and alternating through until I've actually filled up my mould. Now I've actually chosen this mould for two reasons. Firstly, I've decided I want a loaf shape rather than a slab mould and that's purely just to make it easier when I need to plane the bits off that I need for the rim. Planing off sections from a slab is actually really quite difficult to do. A loaf will be more straightforward. And then secondly, I chose this particular mould for those of you who've seen a lot of my videos, you know that I normally stick to my lovely acrylic mould that I've got from Custom Craft Tools. The reason I chose this one is because when I unmould this soap from its silicone liner, it will then just be a fraction smaller than the box that it sits in. So therefore I can pop the soap back in and use that box as a guide for me to plane off the bits I need. Do you know what? I really love a peacock swirl. Now it's probably not going to look its ultimate best in this loaf mould, but you're still going to see the technique and how it's done. Normally you would do it in a slab mould, but I've explained my reasons for using my loaf. So let's just speed this up a little bit and get to the rest of the pour. And don't forget that little tip you've seen me do before, as you get lower down in your squeeze bottles, start popping them and keeping them upside down in a jug so that all the batter stays towards the tips and then that stops you squirting out any air bubbles. And now the exciting bit. Oh, God, I love a peacock swirl. Right, you need something quite thin, so a little bamboo skewer like this is ideal. And you want to drag that all the way to the bottom and through your soap in a nice straight line. And then keep doing that in lines that are pretty close to each other. And you need to make sure that you're just dragging in one direction. This is not like a Taiwan swirl, you go up and down and up and down. Just drag the same way and clean off your skewer between each individual drag. Now you can actually buy 
tools for making a peacock swirl or you see some people make sort of like a comb where they stick lots and lots of skewers onto a piece of cardboard. I find as long as you've got a nice fluid batter just one little skewer works absolutely fine and you don't have to spend any money on some sort of weird expensive tool. So now we need to turn our what already is quite a nice pattern into our peacock and we do this by doing our actual peacock swirl bit now. So as you can see you're just going to do this loopy design all the way through your soap. Now mine can't be that big because I'm doing it in a loaf mould. If you're doing it in a slab mould you do this all the way down your slab. And then what will happen is in these little sort of segments that you've got it will kind of look like a peacock's tail. So here we go with mine and although I haven't got a full slab, if you think about it, by the time you chopped a slab into bars anyway, they would come out with a bit of the design. So mine's going to look exactly the same in the end as if you did it in a slab. Okay, so I'm just going through and putting those little peacock tails in. And then just carefully turning it round because it's still very fluid, this batter, just so you can see it the right way up. And then as normal, I'll cover it up and wrap it and pop it in the oven at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 75 degrees Celsius. Turn the oven off as soon as the loaf goes in there and leave it to sit overnight. Now I actually unmoulded this loaf about 14 hours later because I didn't want it too stiff. And all I'm doing now is I've got some little pieces of cardboard and I'm just cutting them so they're going to fit into the box of that mould because I'm going to use it to gradually lift up the height of the soap as I plane the bits off. I then did a little test fit with my soap and initially I was a little bit high because I wanted to just take off a very thin amount to get rid of the slight roughness on the top and get a perfectly smooth layer. And once I've got it to the right height, I'm then just going to use my, I don't know what this tool is, this is what I use currently for cutting my slabs. It's basically a guitar string stretched against some sort of I don't know, a coping saw or something is this called? But any type of string or wire. I have done this with the slab mould where I've literally held a guitar string, wrapped in some towel at the end and then just dragged it through. So once I've got my nice smooth top, I'm now going to add in another layer of cardboard and then use that to slice off the first bit of soap that I actually want to use for my rims. Now we need that piece of soap to be pretty flexible so what I've done is I've wrapped it in a little piece of cling wrap and I've popped it back in the oven on a really really low heat. It's gone in at 55 degrees because I just want to take the chill off of it and make it warm. And now I'm just using a piece of freezer paper to get the amount of soap I need to put inside my mould. So I'm just going to take that paper have it a little bit longer than it actually needs to be and line it up inside the mould and then I'm just going to look at where that paper actually crosses inside the mould and then just mark it and a little dot on the other side so I can see you know where the length actually goes and that will give me the length of soap that I need.
and then time to get that slightly warm soap out of the oven and now it's just nice and pliable I mean, you don't want it to be hot and all soggy but you do want it so that it's warm enough that it's not going to crack so I'm just going to very gently unwrap it cut it to the length I need using my freezer paper template and then I'm going to initially, whilst it's still warm, just wrap it around the outside of the tube to start that bend going. Now don't panic, it's not going to meet in the middle, so don't think you've cut it too short. And once you've then done that and got that initial bend going, you can then afford to push it a little bit tighter and slot it inside your tube. Now when you do actually put it inside your tube, because of the thickness of the soap, you will actually still get a little bit of overlap and that's what you want, that's perfect. If you're worried about not getting an overlap, then cut it slightly longer than your template. And what you then want to do is slide your knife inside the tube and cut down over where you have the join. If you do it at an angle, that's great because you then get a nice bevel and then you'll have everything lining up perfectly. and then just a quick run over with your finger over that seam to make sure it's nicely sealed. Then I'm just going to take each one because I'm going to do a few of these and keep them in a sealed bag so they don't dry out while I prepare the others and the middle bit for the soaps. So after I've prepared all my pipes I'm then just going to chop up the rest of the bar before it gets too stiff to turn into bars of soap so just chopping up as normal. Now I do want to have some little sort of peacocky swirl centres right in the middle of my rimmed soaps so I'm just going to mark off how much I need for that before I then make my bars from the rest of the peacock loaf. And then I just made some centres for my rimmed soap by using a cookie cutter to cut out those last little bits of soap, just straightening them off with a knife as I push them out of the cutter. And then to finish off my rim soaps, I made up a small quantity of white soap batter, just with some titanium dioxide in it, added my fragrance oil, and then when I was happy with the trace, poured a little bit into each of the rimmed soaps. Now I have put some caps on the bottom of these with some cling wrap to stop them leaking. And then I'm just going to pop in those little embeds and then top them off. I'm then going to cover them with some caps I made. I just made these by chopping up an old bottle and covering it with duct tape to get the correct shape. And once again, I'll just see pop these as normal until the next day. So here they are the next day. I've pushed them out of the moulds and they came out really nice and easily because I'd lined them with that freezer paper. So now I just need to top and tail the very ends off them and chop them into their bars.
I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel and maybe ring the notification bell. If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. I'm really good at getting back to people, so I will respond to your comment. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!